Let's see. We need our battery now. Okay. Um, black is horizontal. We want to solder this now. feel much better now having successfully soldered one joint knowing I can do it again it's a big confidence booster because that was about the hardest soldering job I can imagine unbelievable difficulty right there that's for sure Okay, I'm going to break it down in multiple steps. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder a little bead on the base of it. And I'm going to use that as a tie down point when I wrap it in solder later. I mean, when I wrap it in copper wire later. Okay, so I just put a little bead up around the base. You can see it right here. It's a little bit sticking out. And that was my first step. All right, so let me just start wrapping it anyways. Probably didn't need it to be on there anyways. Okay, now I'm just going to do like a figure eight pattern. all around it. Put it through. The aim here is just to lock down the positioning.
Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. It's pretty tight. I'll try to show you a close up of what I just did. Um, the red side is the one I just wrapped in copper wire. Uh, you can see the wire kind of wrapped around, but you can see it's held in place now. You can also see the bead at the base of the wire where I just put a little bit of solder. And that gave me something to wrap the wire around. You can see between that bead and the red tubing of the wire, you can see I wrapped my first few wraps there. And that's how I got the, the wire started. Then I wrapped it around the whole front side and the, the outside of the Dean's plug. And then I wrapped it several times around between where it's going to be soldered to and the plug. So I just wrapped the wire everywhere in like a figure eight. Um, it would have been better if I had like three feet of wire. I could have really wrapped the heck out of it like wrap, like a spider wrapping a bug. But this is actually holding it in place. You can see it. It's, it's not obviously very strong structurally, but I think that'll be enough to hold it in exactly the place I want and get the soldering started. And we'll go from there. Once enough solder is on there, it will, it will stay in place by itself. I'm going to start out just just kind of warming all the metal in general. I'm going to do this for quite a while. I think it helps to move things in kind of a circular motion. I don't know why that helps, but it just does. Seems like it exposes kind of higher up on the tip of the pencil tip soldering iron. Actually, I feel like right about now is where I would need flux, but I don't know. Okay, at this point, I just created like a big bead of solder. Um, kind of bridging the gap between the pin and the red, the red wiring. And it's just a big random blob. That will be smoothed out later. So I'm not worried about the aesthetics right now. I'm just worried about letting that cool and having it be a good sticking hold to get me started. Also, I'm not using any flux. I don't 
I don't think it's making a difference. The, by the time everything gets hot, the flux already dissipates. Like you see it smoking and then it disappears. It's it's like I, I can't get things set up in, in time for the flux to even matter. Okay, so now I'm just treating the back side as a fresh new project. Now, now that one side's held, we got it wrapped in copper wire. You can see that this side of the red is completely no solder, no nothing on it. And You know what, I am going to put some flux down, just in case, if deep down at some point it sucks into it later on in the process, I'll do it. I'll just soak it all in flux. Heck with it. It can't hurt. Certainly can't hurt. Okay. Each time I solder, I'm, I'm like wiping the soldering tip on paper towel and then I dip it on the wet or the damp uh, sponge they, they gave me with the soldering kit. And then I'm going to tin it just by applying a little bit of solder on the end. Sixty forty two percent flux solder. Okay, and now we're back at it.
Oh, this one's going even better than the first one, man. Can't be happier. Show you guys what I got on that that pass. We're just working our way around. Nope, not too cold of a joint. Nope, nope, nope. Guarantee um, it's going to be a great joint. Because I'm surrounding the entire thing, padding it with, with a whole pipe of solder. A whole pipe. From one side to the other, maybe almost a millimeter thick, entire pipe. And if you're just tuning in, this is this is a, a complex workaround for having a tool that's lacking a chisel tip, so it's not hot enough to just melt a tinned wire to a tinned plug. Instead, I have to be creative 
and just keep working working it all the way around, spreading it around. Also, I think it helps to use kind of the middle of the tip rather than the tip of the tip. I'm just spreading it toward the base now, flattening out the bulb, the bulbousness. Hey, thanks for the host, Derpy. I'm showing you guys how not to solder. <laughs> or more, how to solder with a soldering tip that's a pencil tip. You can see it's uh, just a little pencil tip. And it's a lot harder then if you have a proper tip which is, which is a chisel tip like a flathead screwdriver which gets way hotter so I'm just improvising by creating this big bulbous joint and just blending it and sculpting it all over And notice that my left hand does have a leather glove because it helps so much if you can grab it kind of close to it and hold things in place while you work out the shape of the solder you want. Funny, the irony is usually when you get to this point with the, a lot of solder on here and it's not looking how it's supposed to look, you'd give up and say, oh, it's a cold joint, it's not going to work. But by leaving the soldering iron on there and continue to work it and work it and shape it and shape it, it actually becomes no longer a cold joint because it gets so hot, it's like a reflowing of the solder and it ends up being actually like a properly hot joint where everything's sticking. I just keep going over and over it, shaping it all to perfection after having put an absolute ton of solder on. And you know, the solder was, all that solder was necessary because I want to make sure the joint's really strong. Because I don't trust the joint unless if it, there's a lot of solder and it's covering everywhere and it's creating just an impenetrable fortress. At least I know this, this thing will never, ever fail. Because I, I, I went to such extremes with forming this tremendous 
bulb of power and even blending it out so far all the way to the base. So guys, this is how you can you can get a strong joint without the proper tools. Just using you know, a pencil tip solder that may not even be too hot or hot enough because of the shape of your tip. All right. So, check it out, guys. I totally kicked butt on this red one. This was my second one. Uh, let me get it centered. You can see I just made it like a big fist. I guarantee that joint is not going to fail ever. Guarantee freaking to it. How's that look, guys? I think it looks great. I just got to shave away the the copper wire that I wrapped around it to hold it in place while I got the first tack weld down or whatever you call it. We're Gucci. I'm excited. That that got a lot faster than the first joint. My confidence is going up. My, my strategies are improving. Practice makes perfect. How are you doing, Kevin Hines? Um, my dad has a lighter. He's a smoker. That's about it, though. Why the thicker part? I, I'm, I'm afraid he's the thicker part. We've got a pretty attractive joint going here, and this will plug into a battery, and this will work. It's also very strong, so, I mean, I pretty much won. It took me a while, but in the end, I came out victorious. I made the joint. It's even looking pretty now. Nice and, um... insulated and everything 
did it, baby!